Let's take a look at the APR versus the EAR. So APR stands for its annual percentage rate, and it's the annual rate that is quoted by law. And if you get a loan, you'll, hear, you'll know what the APR is. It'll be stated in the document. If you have a credit card, it tells you what your APR is. Um, sometimes if you listen to the radio or you happen to be watching TV and you see some company, some auto dealership or, or some manufacturer talking about, you can buy this car and this will be, is what your payment will be. If it's on the radio, someone will say, it's usually somebody speaking very quickly, that the you know, $400 a month car payment is based on an APR of a certain percentage. If you happen to be watching on TV, you may see some small print at the bottom of the screen, because in order to know what the payment is, we have to know what the APR is. So by definition, the APR equals the period rate times the number of periods per year, or if we know what the APR is, we can figure out what the periodic rate is by dividing by the number of periods. Now, the problem with APR is it does not account for the return we actually receive because it doesn't account for compounding. So before we account for that, let's just um, take a look at how we would compute this. Right? It's quite simple. If the monthly rate is 1% per month, then the APR is 12%. If the APR is 18% and it's compounded monthly, we divide by 12 and that would be 1.5% per month. The effective rate is the rate that does account for compounding. So if you go into a bank, many times you will see a poster in the lobby that will give the rates for certificates of deposit and it will give you a couple of different rates. It might say, you know, the APR is 5%, and then it'll tell you what the effective rate is based on the compounding. So the effective rate might be, you know, 5.2% based on how they're compounding, whether it's daily or monthly or weekly, etc. The formula is, is that if you know what the APR is, you can solve for the EAR. So what you do is it's 1 plus the APR divided by M, where M is the number of compounding periods. Then it's raised to the nth power, and then you subtract 1. So for example, if it's monthly, then M would be 12. If it's um, daily, this would be 365. If it's quarterly, M would be 4. So let's take a look at a couple of examples. If the APR is 12% and it's compounded monthly, the EAR is going to be 1 plus 0.12 divided by 12 raised to the 12th power minus 1, and it's 0.1268 or 12.68%. And the EAR is 1 plus 0.12 divided by 4 raised to the 4th power minus 1, which equals 0.1255 or 12.55 percent. And we can, we can verify this for ourselves just using the calculator. And let's just see, right? We don't really have to do the math here. 0.12 divided by 12 is 0.01. So let's see, 1.01. And to raise it to a power, we hit the y to the x key and we type in 12, and then we can say equals, and then we subtract 1 from it, and sure enough, we get 0.1268, right? And we can round it off, or we can make a percentage, 12.68%. And we can also do this one here, right? 0.12 divided by 4, 0.03 plus 1, right? So 1.03 in here, Again, raise to the, this case, fourth power, subtract 1 from it, and we get 0.1255 or 12.55 percent. You can, you can do the formula, or if you happen to have a financial calculator, you can take advantage of the fact that it will, there's a function that computes this for you. 
and in the TI business calculator it's I-C-O-N-V. In this case it's over the number two key. So if you hit second and you hit two it'll ask you for the nominal rate. That's the APR. So in this case let's type in 12 and hit enter. We scroll down here it says 12 so for 12 periods right 12 months and if we just scroll back to the effective rate just hit compute and sure enough you get 12.68 percent if you want to do it for quarterly everything else is the same let's just change this to a four hit enter and go up and hit compute and sure enough we get the same answer also you can do this in a spreadsheet you can do this in Excel and there's a function here so let's see the function is effect and it asks you for the nominal rate so I'm going to type in 12 percent and it asks me for n peri so okay so the number of periods per um, year that we're compounding over so if I say 12 what do we get 0.1268 or 12.68 percent right I can make this a, a percentage didn't mean to make it quite that large and just increase the number of decimal places there let's make it a little bit smaller right and I can do it also for the the quarterly compounding again 12 percent and four periods and again we get the same we get the same answer right you have to expand the decimal places for for whatever reason they don't like to show um, a couple of places after the decimal so those are two ways to do it so let's return to our slides here it turns out that if you know the EAR you can also calculate the APR and th this isn't quite as common because remember the APR is the one that's stated by law but if you happen to know what the compound uh, you know the effective rate is you can solve for the APR using this formula right looks a little more tedious 1 plus the EAR raised to the 1 over M power minus 1 times M so let's say we happen to have 19.56 percent with monthly compounding if we work this out it turns out to be 0.17998 which we'd round off to 18 percent and again we can do that on the calculator we could just use the formula let me just I'm gonna need 1 over 12 so 1 divided by 12 is this 0 0.0833333 I'm gonna store that in my calculator by hitting store 1 and so I'm going to say 1.1956 raised to the recall 1 power right this is the 1 12th power minus 1 times 12 and again I get that 0.17998 which we rounded off to 18 percent again you can also use this I convert function so let's go this way so here I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to say I know what the effective rate is it's 19.56 and you have to hit enter to make sure you see that equal sign and I have to know the number of periods we said this was monthly compounding so again hit the enter sign and then when I see the nominal I'll just hit compute and what do we get we get the same answer right and let me show you in Excel as well in Excel this function is going to be nominal that's what it's referred to and again it asks you for the effective rate we said that was what 19.56 percent and that the number of periods was 12 and there you get 0.17998 Again, we can make it a percentage and then just expand the decimal places we get 18 percent so easy to convert from 
APR to EAR and back again. I mean, we have a couple of formulas here uh, relating APR to EAR and also EAR to APR, but we can easily use the financial calculator or Excel to do this for us.